Mexico City, beneath the current day capital of Mexico, lie the ruins of the ancient Aztec metropolis known as Tenochtitlan. The Aztecs dominated much of central Mexico from the 14th to the 16th century AD. And Tenochtitlan is considered to be their first official settlement. An incredibly sophisticated city featuring a grid system of canals and causeways. But according to their historical texts, the Aztec civilization did not originate here. The Aztecs say they started from this place up in the north called Chiquimostoc. It was a cave, and inside that cave, it had seven different caverns. And there were said to be seven different tribes. And the Aztecs say they were part of the seven tribes that came from the seven chambers of Chiquimostoc. While Chico Mostoc was once thought to be a mythological place, some scholars believe archaeological evidence suggests that it really did exist and is located at the site of the ancient pyramid complex known today as Teotihuacan. The place of seven caves, we think maybe that has actually been located archaeologically at the site of the main temple of Teotihuacan called the Pyramid of the Sun, which sits just north of the Valley of Mexico. Underneath it is actually a cave with seven different spots that it extends out into. And that's where the Aztecs said their original ancestors came from. In the 16th century, Spanish chronicler Geronimo de Mendieta recorded the legends of the local native population. According to their accounts, the Aztec believed that they were fashioned by a group of stranded gods within these seven caves. Mendieta wrote an account of Aztec legend. In this report, he describes a giant flint knife landing on the earth and the earth was trembling and shaking as this enormous flint knife landed. Then some 1,600 gods disgorged from this thing, and they are responsible for launching Aztec civilization. The Aztecs talk about the many gods coming down to earth and creating humans. They create them out of bone, ash, and their own blood, and they make them somewhat in their own image, but they make them specifically so that they will honor them and they will serve them. All of a sudden, there is a description of a giant flint knife that descended from the sky, and somebody emerged out of it. One has to wonder whether or not our ancestors were witness to a landing of some type of a craft. If so, then the Aztec story suggests that at some point in our history, extraterrestrials created mankind. And something very strange was going on at Teotihuacan. Located just 30 miles northeast of Mexico City, the Teotihuacan complex encompasses nearly eight square miles and is dated to the first century AD. It is the oldest and most sophisticated city of Mesoamerica, an area that extends from northern Mexico down through Central America. The civilization predated the Maya by at least a hundred years. At its peak, it was said to have supported nearly 100,000 residents. It was also the largest city in the entire Western Hemisphere prior to the 15th century and served as the major commerce and religious center for the region. The significance of Teotihuacan cannot be overstated. It is the Rome of Mesoamerica. The things that Teotihuacan did set the pattern for all other city-states after it. The central features of the complex are two large pyramids, 
known as the Pyramid of the Sun and the Pyramid of the Moon, as well as a temple dedicated to Quetzalcoatl, the Feathered Serpent. These structures stand alongside a thoroughfare referred to as the Avenue of the Dead. Over 200 smaller buildings, platforms, and pyramids are found adjacent to the avenue. And there are thousands of living quarters just outside the complex. But as incredible as Teotihuacan is, no one knows exactly who built this metropolis or what happened to its occupants. Teotihuacan, despite its size, has no hieroglyphs whatsoever. There are other cultures in Mesoamerica that were using writing systems. There's nothing like that at Teotihuacan. So we don't really have a clear history of what happened at Teotihuacan. And we can't really find evidence of their rulers. We don't know who were the original Teotihuacanos. We don't know where they came from. We do not know how they were able to develop a complete huge complex citadel in the middle of nowhere and able to sustain thousands of inhabitants. We have such a sophisticated site that embodies engineering principles, craftsmanship, art. Where did it originate? Where are the smaller versions of this? Well, we don't find any. So we don't have a progression, an evolution, to show where this came from. And so we have to ask, where did it come from? We become conditioned to look at these awesome works of stone architecture and think, oh, primitive people did that, and they used primitive methods with primitive technology. But we have to rethink the fundamental assumptions and come to a greater and greater level of understanding that the technology required to build these artifacts, in fact, is greater than anything that they possessed. Teotihuacan, Mexico. In 2003, archaeologists in this ancient city made a startling discovery. A previously unknown tunnel lies 45 feet beneath the temple of the Feathered Serpent one of the most sacred pyramids on the continent. Working underground, scientists methodically explored the debris-filled tunnel using a robotic probe with an infrared scanner. After some 250 feet, they reached a side cave. The tail end of the tunnel, terminus of the tunnel, is loaded with uh, yellowish metallic-looking orbs, apparently colored clay, the orbs are very interesting objects. I've never seen anything like them in any kind of other archaeological context. On the inside, they are clay. On the outside, they're coated with some sort of gold flecks, so they look like golden balls. What purpose these golden balls served is unknown, but some archaeologists believe the cavern in which they were found was a place of sacred ritual. Like the clay balls, the walls were also covered in gold flecks. So if the cavern was illuminated by a torch during a ceremony, it would have shimmered with a thousand points of light, resembling the cosmos. These beautiful orbs of yellow material strongly suggest that someone was illustrating planets. We do know that the Mayan calendar is heavily calibrated to the orbital parameters of the planets in our solar system, specifically the inner planets. The red planet's connection to the Mayan calendar is portrayed in the Dresden Codex. This rare book from Mayan antiquity describes the calendar in relation to Mars movements across the sky. The Dresden Codex is one of four remaining books that the Maya wrote. It is, in many regards, an astronomical almanac. There are many different sections of the book that talk about different astronomical phenomena. 
One of them is the planet Mars. There is an almanac near the end of the book that breaks up days into 10 groups of 78 days, equaling 780 days, which is the synodic period of Mars. In other words, the time in which it takes Mars to get back to the same place on the horizon from a human perspective. Scholars believe Mars played an important role in the Maya astrology that's described in the Dresden Codex. Above that almanac is a sky band shown with various aspects of celestial symbols we recognize out of hieroglyphs. And hanging off of it is this interesting dragon-like creature. That dragon-like creature is recognized as the face of Mars. giant megalithic stone heads, figurines of what appear to be flying craft, and statues that evoke cultures found on the other side of the world. According to ancient astronaut theorists, it is this information that the Catholic Church sought to suppress when they attempted to destroy all traces of the Maya culture nearly 500 years ago. Now what's interesting is all these great ancient cultures, including the Mayan, seem to have knowledge of math and science, which we can't explain how they got this information. When you ask them, they always tell you it came from the gods. If the proof existed, not only of cross-Pacific migration, but also extraterrestrial visitation, many ancient astronaut theorists believe it would have posed a serious threat to a Catholic hierarchy steeped in the bigotry and intolerance of the Inquisition. But if this incredible theory is true, what then happened to the extraterrestrial visitors? Why did they come here, only to leave or go into hiding? Because of various wars going on, cataclysms, eventually these civilizations began to collapse, as civilizations do. And what happened in the end was the, the airships, they stopped coming. And then the extraterrestrial demigods pulled their technology back. So we don't know what happened there with the extraterrestrials and where they went. And so you have to wonder if they don't want us to know that they are here. The extraterrestrials may have just decided, okay, humans on planet Earth have, have got the seeds of civilization. Let's just stand back and see what they do. As far as ancient astronaut theorists are concerned, the proof of extraterrestrial visitation is still out there, much of it buried beneath centuries of dirt and rocks. But every day, the truth is being revealed. In February 2018 through March 2019, archaeologists made a number of incredible discoveries just in the area of Mexico alone. Mayan artifacts were discovered in Teotihuacan, a location previously thought to have been inhabited only by the Aztecs. 200 more artifacts were found in a hidden cave under the Mayan site of Chichen Itza. And beneath dense jungles near Lake Pozcuaro, LIDAR scanning uncovered an ancient city the size of Manhattan. In the early 1990s, there were these science fiction stories that one day we'll be able to somehow look underneath the overgrown jungle. And sure enough, here we are, 20, 25 years later, and that technology now exists satellites are now able to look through the soil into the ground to see if other structures exist. And guess what? They do. We have only now begun a new era of discovery, and I predict thousands as of yet undiscovered sites will finally see the light of day. If you have a puzzle with a thousand pieces, in order to see the final picture, you don't need to lay down all 1,000 pieces. If you lay down 980 pieces, 
I guarantee you, you will see the big picture. Is mankind on an incredible threshold of discovery? One that will confirm that extraterrestrial visitation has occurred all over the world and for centuries. Perhaps beneath the ruins of a newly discovered site in Mexico, archaeologists will uncover the ultimate evidence of alien contact and proof of humanity's true origins. Teotihuacan, Mexico. Dating back to at least the first century AD, this ancient complex was once the largest city in Mesoamerica, with a population of 125,000. One of the most sacred temples at the site is the Temple of the Feathered Serpent, an enormous step pyramid dedicated to the god Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent, goes all the way back to Olmec times, to the BCE period. But the first place that we really see Quetzalcoatl is in Teotihuacan, the city just north of modern Mexico City. They build a actual pyramid, a temple of Quetzalcoatl, right around 250 AD. So it's probably Teotihuacan who really put forward the idea and the identity of Quetzalcoatl as a deity for the rest of Mesoamerica. Quetzalcoatl was a creator god. He was associated with the planet Venus. He brought the rain, he brought water, he brought civilization, he brought the arts. This was the creator divinity for the Aztec culture. It was a flying serpent, it was a dragon. Quetzalcoatl brought peace, harmony, and high wisdom and a very high level of intelligence and teaching to this particular land. He was often depicted as a human being as well. He arrived on a raft of serpents and settled on these lands. Quetzalcoatl also shows up in the post-classic Maya city of Chichen Itza. But they give him a Maya name. They call him Kukulkan which is basically the holy feathered serpent in Maya. The ancient Mayan city of Chichen Itza lies roughly 900 miles east of Teotihuacan. And at its center stands another massive steppe pyramid. This one dedicated to the Mayan version of the flying serpent, Kukulkan. In Chichen Itza, there we have the pyramid of Kukulkan. And every year on the 23rd of March, you see, when the sun is going up, some lights and shadows, lights and shadows, like triangles, climbing down the stairway, exactly the stairway where his head is on. And on the 21st of September, you see the opposite, Kukulkan, disappears. And it's only made by light and shadow of the natural sun. So still today, the message is clear. God Kukulkan has descended to the humans. He teached them for a certain period, and then he disappeared again. So right there, we have living mythology in a structure that shows this deity descending from the sky in stone. You wonder, perhaps a craft landed here, and this light shadow effect of a serpent making its way descending down the staircase and then emerging through a serpent head is a recollection of that original event. Is it possible that the Pyramid of Kukulkan was not built to honor a mythical dragon god, but to commemorate the arrival of an extraterrestrial spacecraft? Ancient astronaut theorists say yes and suggest this isn't the only dragon-themed structure that marks a location of alien contact. Evia, Greece. The landscape of this small Greek island is spotted with 25 mysterious megalithic structures called dragon houses. The main dragon house is at the very top of one of the tallest mountains on the island called Mount Ohi. Mount Ohi comes from the word ohivare, which means to descend and to drive. 
And so this is interesting because according to legend, the reason why the dragon house exists at the top of Mount Ohi is because Zeus allegedly descended from the heavens on top of that mountain. According to local legend, these stone structures were built by a giant dragon to venerate the god Zeus. In ancient Greece, the word dragon was not only used to describe a flying monster, but also gods and other figures that had human-like form but possessed superhuman powers. Now, when you put all this together, this sounds like the dragon house is a meeting place of heaven and earth. In UFO vernacular, that would be a landing spot. In my opinion, the dragon was the craft out of which then the creator people or the teachers emerged. Our ancestors, basically, they saw a crew coming out of an airplane. According to ancient astronaut theorists, some of the structures themselves serve as evidence that this was a place of extraterrestrial contact. The Dragon House on top of Mount Ohi contains megalithic blocks weighing up to 10 tons and sits at an elevation of almost 5,000 feet. Archaeologists have a hard time explaining why it was even built there because we are talking of this gigantic megalithic structure with a ceiling that contains blocks that are up to 10 feet long, two feet thick, at an altitude of 5,000 feet. How was that done? In my opinion, this was an extraterrestrial visitation where Zeus may have descended in his craft and built a day camp. Could the stone structures found in Greece and Mesoamerica mark the locations where otherworldly beings landed on Earth and ultimately returned to the stars?